what the righteous need to do. We need to overcome evil with good. We need to be proactive and not reactive. Uh, we need to be proactive like Trayvon Ma Martin's parents. We need to be proactive. Because as I look at the stained glass window uh, of our saints, yes, of our saints, I'm looking at Booker T. Washington. And Booker T. Washington said that you can't throw mud without getting your hands dirty. And so we can't overcome evil with evil, but we got to overcome evil with good. And yes, number two, we got to be a part of the solution and not a part of the problem by protecting our own voting rights. And then after we get our voting rights, we got to vote. Yeah. You see, uh, we have to, number three, broaden our voting base with new voters. Uh, you see, we've lost uh, some voters as a result of a recent Supreme Court decision. And then we've lost some voters. When you think about all of the black men that come home from prison as felons and have lost their right to vote. I wish I could make it plain. Uh, if they have paid their debt to society, uh, if the debt is paid, why can't they vote? And, and number four, we got to repeal stand your ground laws. And then number five, we got to uh, address racial profiling. Uh, uh, you see, uh, don't judge me just because I'm a black male. Uh, don't follow me just in the store because you think that uh, I don't have an American Express card. Uh, let me show you my debit card. Uh, let me show you my American Express card. Uh, I may be brown, I may be black, but I'm black and proud because God doesn't make any junk. And then we have to dress head on black own black crime in our own neighborhoods. Uh, we ought to be able to run the evil out of our neighborhood. Ought to be able to say, you're not welcome here. Uh, we ought to be able to say that we, we don't stand for gutter rap. Uh, we don't like for you to use language that demeans our women uh, because we are a proud people. We are a dignified people. We are a God-fearing people. Uh, we have come thus far by faith, leading on the Lord. And then number seven, when God gives us friends like the Jewish community, 
Uh, and I want you to know that uh, uh, this is the liberal Jewish community. I want you to know that the rabbi's life has been threatened more than once because he has said that God not only loves Jews, but he also loves Palestinians. I'm glad about it. I'm glad that he's my friend. I'm glad. Yes, I am. Yes, yes. Well, I must not hold you too long. But I want to tell you that we have some Jewish friends. I want to tell you that we have some white friends. I want to tell you that there are some people that believe that there is only one race, and that's the human race. I want to say that many of our white Republicans I suggest that song. And to a kind of privatistic meism, which means that it's a vertical relationship between me and God so that they don't have to be concerned about health care. Yes. Yes. They don't have to be concerned about disparities in education. Because it's me and Jesus. Thou to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy mind, with all thy soul, with all thy strength. And my neighbor as myself. So it has to be not only vertical, But also what? Horizontal. That's how they could go to church on Sunday and lynches on Friday. Because they didn't have horizontal. Now I got permission from the pastor to say this. But if you don't like what he's, what I did, don't bother him. My shoulders are broad. Brothers and brothers, let the sermon simmer. We were given about seven points to take home with us. We're given an agenda of what to do. And I want to share with you that I am so deeply encouraged. I was encouraged when I went on Twitter immediately after the verdict. And President Ben, Chav uh, ben Jealous of the NAACP. Within seconds, had posted a tweet that said, moving from anger to action. And he had attached to it a petition for us to sign. But I was so moved by that immediate tweet 
that became the topic of my sermon last Sunday moving from anger to action and so we have to all look within our our own spirits and determine what things we can do and we can certainly will have at the top that seven-point agenda we received today I'm encouraged I tell you I'm encouraged because right here in Oakland a giant of a filmmaker emerged he's a writer and a director and he wrote and produced this film that has taken all of the critics by surprise and with great uh, he's received great acclaim he happens to be the first cousin of Elizabeth Douglas I speak of Ryan Coogler and his film we all need to go see it it's called Fruitvale Station and I tell you, he did his part to move us from apathy to sympathy and to empathy. What are you going to do? What am I going to do as we go forth to do our part to move things from anger to action, from apathy to empathy? into sympathetic action. Let's take that seven point servant, sisters and brothers. God has spoken. Let the church say, Amen. <laughs>